Hey guys, it's Cassie and today we are going through what's new in luxury fashion this month, August edition, where I, this is my monthly instalment where I go through fashion news, things that you need to know about, what's hot, what's coming to prepare you, I do all the research that you don't have to. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I write videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head down the subscribe on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <coughs> oh, never. Guys, you ready? Okay, let's go. Any of these items are available, the links will be below. Starting off on a sombre note for the fashion news segment, um, Japanese fashion designer Ize Miyake died aged 84. He was so well known for his innovative designs that really leaned on like a technology aspect, right? There were so many brands under his name, the eponymous brand Ize Miyake, followed by Pleats Please, he has so many pieces that are so undeniably his and innovation was such at the core of everything that he did. Such iconic, well-known designs. And he died after a battle with cancer. He really paved the way for a lot of technology in fashion as well. So he will always leave behind a legacy. Fashion news item number two, Richemont. Uh, has sold or is to sell their stake in Uke's net a porter to Farfetch, right? So there's a 47, we're getting into the fashion business news, okay? So Richemont, which is the um, owner of Cartier, currently owns 47.5% of Uke's net a porter group. Now they are selling to Farfetch, so nobody will have a controlling stake in Uke's net a porter. However, there are some basically some options in place that mean that should Farfetch meet X requirements, this paves the way to their, for them to own Uke's net a porter in its entirety. This really paves the way for Farfetch to become the largest luxury online retailer slash owner. net a -Porter has been, net a -Porter, net a -Porter has been loss making for I don't know how many years but it basically seems as though what Richemont thought that they were going to get out of owning this they didn't get essentially. So very interesting way that things are going shall we say. Right, fashion news item number three. Balenciaga launches the trash pouch. Okay, so we saw on the autumn winter 2022 runway from Balenciaga models carrying leather trash bags, bin bags, whatever you want to call them, down the runway, swinging from their wrists and their tiny little drawstrings. So those did make it into production and they will be going on sale. And um, I don't have the pound price, but I believe they will be around the $1,790 mark. Yes. Just in case anyone was unaware of Balenciaga's complete awareness of how much of fashion trolls they are. Demner, who's the creative director of Balenciaga, did say the following, I couldn't miss an opportunity to make the most expensive trash bag in the world because who doesn't love a fashion scandal? He is 100% in on the joke, knows the controversy of things like this, but, I, but he also knows that, guess what? People are gonna buy it. And that's what keeps their name in everybody's mouths. Moving on to Balmain launching a fine jewelry line. Yes, now. There are 32 gender neutral designs as a part of this first collection and everything is done in a very socially conscious way. So there's ethically sourced 18 karat gold and conflict free materials used across all of the designs. To be very honest with you, the designs aren't really something that I would personally go for. There's a lot of their kind of like newish, oldish sort of logo, which to me is very reminiscent of the Sarche's Greek key. Item number five, the list Q2 2022 report came out and I wanted to quickly report on the top three hottest women's items, men's items, and the top three hottest brands of the quarter. So women's items, number one is the Diesel 1DR bag. I'm not surprised at all. I told you Diesel is having a comeback. This bag has been very popular, definitely among amongst like Gen Z and a lot of celebrities. It's very kind of like, it's a very easy versatile bag as well. So that in no way surprises me. Number two is the Adidas Gucci Gazelle sneaker. Again, in no way am I surprised. Um, 
it's definitely the piece out of the whole collection that is the most wearable to for most people I think. And then thirdly this one kind of threw a little bit of a spanner in the works, the Jean-Paul Gaultier and Lotta Volkova naked dress. I've seen this around in like very fashion-y corners of Instagram and Twitter and whatnot. It's obviously a very bold, very daring piece that, you know, I mean, could I walk around in that? Maybe not, I don't know. But um, either way, I think it's quite cool. So for the men's side, the number one is the Adidas Wales Bonner. Um, sneaker, again, very wearable piece. Item number two are Birkenstocks, the Boston suede clog. And item number three is the Yeezy Balenciaga engineered by Gap, whatever that sodding thing is, hoodie, right? It's a grey sodding hoodie, it says Gap on it and Kanye West is somehow involved. Right, and then the hottest brands, we've got Gucci, number one. People are always surprised um, when Gucci's number one. Gucci, globally, does very well because there's a lot in Gucci for a lot of people um so good for them shout out number two is Balenciaga are you surprised once again they are very good at keeping their name in everybody's mouths they did the destroyed sneakers um not that long ago they've got the trash pouch we are all here nattering about them and then the third hottest brand is Prada again are you surprised? Not really. They are really turning out pieces that are very wearable, very timeless, but still very cool at the same time. Moving into new and noteworthy. A very fabulous pair of shoes here. Jimmy Choo has done a very special one-off collaboration with Sailor Moon. I'm a little bit late to report on this one, but bear with me. They are still available if you want them, but hold on a second. Let me tell you the details. So, obviously, inspired by the very popular anime series, these very special pink boots encrusted with 19,000 Swarovski crystals are currently available to pre-order, and this is for the 30th anniversary of Sailor Moon. They are available uh, to pre-order from July the 1st to September 15th, and they will set you back approximately 15 thousand dollars and they will ship in february 2023 obviously very limited quantities blah 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 if you are the biggest sailor moon fan in the world maybe this makes complete sense to you and if not at least you now know that they exist okay next collaboration this is stuart wiseman and disney disney bops around doing a lot of collaborations with a lot of designer brands in the past we've seen gucci very recently we saw givenchy that really was nothing to talk about was it Everything is currently available online and in select Stuart Wiseman stores. They've got these sort of like Mickey shaped Swarovski crystals on, on suede boots, on the 50-50, you know, so the knee-high suede boots. They've got sneakers with like a printed little, you know, family of characters on there. They've done the nudist sandal with like a little Mickey or a mini, I can't remember, on the back of the heel and also in another heel height. I actually think that they've done this quite well. You can easily incorporate this into your wardrobe and it doesn't look too too merchy. Next up just wanted to very briefly touch on Supreme and Rolex. Yes, I don't really talk about watches on here but I thought this one was quite interesting. This has been teased for Supreme's Full Winter 2022 collection and this is going to be the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date Watch. Stainless steel with the red super doesn't quite finish dial. Now, this isn't the first time they've kind of done something like this. Supreme did a friends and family collaboration in 2013 on a Rolex as well that um, had a little bit of profanity oh, on there. I feel like it's very impressive, the calibre of collaborations that Supreme continues to do. That watch, by the way, the, the 2013 one, is currently fetching over $100,000. So, if you can get your hands on one of these, might be worth a pretty penny. The next is kind of like a brand introduction, Il Fratellino. And this is a new shoe brand from Brian Atwood and his brother, Zach Rodriguez. This is their new shoe line and everything is made in Italy, but it's priced very, very much more on the affordable shoe size. I believe we've got prices ranging from 250 to 500 euros, I believe. And they've got, they've been dropping some heels, some sneakers. I really, really like the sneakers. They're all white with like a metallic little twist, but I'm really excited about this. Let's keep an eye out. Let's keep watching. I think it's a good one. The next one is just like a little personal little just like throw in there. Self-portrait is having a resurgence in my eyes. Now look, self-portrait for me back in the day was like, do you want lace? Self-portrait, right? 
full to the brim of lace. And obviously as years change, style changes and all of that, Self-Portrait's recent campaign and collections? Sodding fire, let me tell you. The vibe has very much shifted. They've always been, they're very much a contemporary, kind of more affordable luxury brand. Um, but definitely if you're wanting something for like an event or something like that, or like a fabulous little night moment, maybe a fancy dinner, maybe a date, I don't know. Definitely have a cast your eyes over to, to self-portrait. You might be very uh, happily surprised. Moving on to hot new items, yes. Number one, the Gucci dad sandals, okay? Hear me out here. You know me, I'm not the biggest dad sandal fan that there is, but mesh Gucci sandal with a suede trim with the crystal GGs in the mesh. It's basically a dad sandal version of the kitten heels that they did for the Aria collection, and truly a pleasure these are. Now, once again, dad sandals do not suit me. I haven't tried these, but I'm assuming that they're gonna go the same way that any others I've tried on are going, but I'm just saying, if you are in the market for a pair of dad sandals, cast your eyes, take a gander over on these because they are really fabulous, fun, little bit of extraness into your day, gonna put a pep in your step, what more do you want? Then we have the Fendi bowling bag. Okay. This is giving vintage vibes, very cool. Um, Zucker print canvas with the FFs interlocking on the front in leather that, you know, is joined to the um, to the handles. Really nice. I really like this and I see it being very popular and rightfully so. It also does have a longer canvas strap so you're not just, you know, if you want it to be more than a shoulder bag, she can be. Definitely priced a bit more on the affordable side as well. And I just think it's worth knowing because I think this is, I think it's fabulous. The next one got me sort of really reevaluating everything I've done in life in a good way, as in like, right, how do we, how do we suddenly make this happen? Tiffany came out with their new fine jewellery, you know, like their jewellery range, they are a fine jewellery house called the Lock Range. It's a unisex range, but I mean, come on, all jewellery is unisex, let's be honest. And it is perfect. It's basically this sort of oblong shape, right? And the way it's... To close it, you sort of like pull it out and hinge it out, right? And then you weasel your hand in and then you lock it, okay? This comes in, no diamonds, so just solid gold, yellow, white, rose. Then you've got gold half parve diamonds. You've got gold dots of diamonds, right? Then you've got sodden all parve everything. What I really like about this is if you do the half gold, half parve, you can have a mix of metals and I like it. And I just think that this is fabulous and I love it. And it's a really, really great range from Tiffany. Anyway, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this month's installation of Watch New in Luxury Fashion. I will leave a link in the video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And in the words of my father... If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.